You know a great curveball when you see it. Lance McCullers Jr., Adam Wainwright, Corey Kluber, all are great examples of this. We all know those pitches are good. However, did you know that those three pitches move in an entirely different manner? Well, this video is going to break down the curveball variations we see across the league. What's up guys? My name is Chris Langan. I'm a pitching coordinator here at Driveline Baseball. And in this video, we're going to touch on curveballs and their different movement variations. If you haven't yet, you've got to watch our introductory video on the basics of pitch movement and spin. This will set the foundation for you to understand everything we're discussing in this video. If you've seen our previous video where we break down sliders, you know that breaking ball shapes are quite volatile across the league. Curveballs primarily vary in their movement profile in two different ways, the spin direction of the pitch and the spin efficiency of the pitch. When looking at the direction of movement, we're going to bin this into three categories. Slurbs, typically thrown from about a 745 to 830 spin direction, the standard curveball, typically at around 7 to 745, and the downer profile, which typically moves at about 530 to 7. For spin efficiency, we've got three categories as well. The inefficient curveball, typically around 40 to 60% active spin, the standard curveball, about 60 to 84%, and the efficient curveball, which is greater than 85%. Now, when we made this video, we bend things based off of movement. So if a pitcher has an exceptional spin rate, they may find themselves in the efficient category with say 75% active spin. Whereas a pitcher with a lower spin rate may need 85% to get to that same movement profile. If you combine those two together and do a little bit of math, you're gonna come up with nine categories. Of those nine categories, there's two pitches, the gyro curveball and the inefficient slurve which to the hitter's perception actually tends to play a bit more like a slider. In addition to these, we've also got our more prototypical or traditional type curveball profiles. These are the inefficient downer, the slurve, the standard curveball, the downer, the efficient slurve, the efficient curveball, and the efficient downer. Liberally classifying pitches in the arsenal as simply a slider, cutter, or curveball just isn't enough as there's too much variety, and based off of the shape of the pitch, it is just going to play differently to a hitter. For example, take a look at these classified curveballs by TJ Antone, Tyler Glasnow, and Josiah Gray. In this series, we'd classify Antone's breaking ball as a high-efficiency serve, Glasnow's as an efficient downer, and Josiah Gray's as a gyro curveball. Let's work our way from the top of this movement chart, so closer to a slider, all the way down to the bottom where we get closer to our efficient curveball profiles, starting with the gyro curveball. Over the past two seasons, about 5% of classified curveballs have had movement values that fall in line with the gyro curveball. On average, these pitches were thrown about 81 and a half miles per hour with about five inches of downward break. These pitches tend to mimic the role of a traditional slider for a lot of arsenals. In addition, the lack of depth on the offering makes it tough to pair with a traditional slider in the same arsenal. Herman Marquez and Josiah Gray are examples of pitchers with noteworthy gyro curveballs in the arsenal. It is certainly worth mentioning that each hurdler is capable of throwing this pitch in the mid 80s to make up for the lack of movement on the profile. Next up, we'll take a look at the inefficient slurve, which is most similar to the slurve variant we discussed in our video on sliders. This breaking ball is fairly common when you combine curveball and slider classifications across the league. When looking strictly at curveballs, about 8% of them had movement values similar to what we have bucketed in our inefficient slurve. Some pitchers, such as Freddy Peralta, may simply leverage it as a freeze pitch in an arsenal that is otherwise fastball and slider dominant. These pitchers know the pitch isn't a number one or two pitch in their arsenal, but the scarce usage can be useful in many contexts. At release, the pitch will consist primarily of gyroscopic spin. The pitcher will get the finger pads in front of the ball just a bit to inflict slight downward action. This pitch has a horizontal component, which differentiates it a bit from our next curveball variant, the inefficient downer. The inefficient downer is the first pitch that begins to approach big league average curveball depth or downward vertical action. Downers have the appearance of just moving vertically. Think of the old 12-6 curveball and where that adage came from, that's basically the same thing we're talking about here whenever we discuss a downer. 6% of classified curveballs ended up in this bucket over the past two seasons. The pitch is thrown about 81 miles per hour on average, the second highest of any of our curveball variants we'll discuss in this video. 
Arm angle tends to be a decent predictor of whether or not a downer is a possibility for a pitcher. Forcing this wrist flexion position can cost hurlers who can't give this movement naturally significant breaking ball velocity. Many pitchers may achieve this through seam shifted weight, as both James Karinchek and Ian Anderson see their curveball spin direction shift closer to the arm side after release. Pitchers typically release this pitch with about 50% gyroscopic spin. The rest of the active spin is almost strictly top spin. This of course assumes there's no non-magnus movement or commonly referred to as seam shifted wake components on the pitch. Next up, we'll move to the moderate efficient curveballs, starting with the slurve. The slurve has made up nearly 15% of classified curveballs since 2020. The pitch is a common option for three quarter or lower slots. On average, it's thrown 79 and a half miles per hour. The pitch often gets a bad rap for having two plane movement, but pitchers have still seen success with the pitch especially when it's thrown hard. Matt Scherzer and Corbin Burns are two examples of starters who utilize it in their arsenal, each with enough vertical break on the pitch to still keep the slider in the arsenal without the fear of the two blending. At release, pitchers are primarily on the side of the ball with a blend of gyroscopic spin. However, the middle finger is still biased towards the front of the ball and adds in a layer of topspin. Like the generic slider, the generic curveball is the most common of all curveball pitch types. This pitch made up 20% of all classified curveballs over the past two seasons. The main distinction of the pitch is around a league average spin efficiency combined with about equal proportions of top spin and side spin. For reference, the average big league curveball had negative 11 inches of vertical and negative 10 inches of horizontal break in 2021. The pitch is typically thrown around 80 miles an hour and generally comes in at around 13 to 16 miles per hour slower than that pitcher's average fastball velocity. At release, an almost perfect balance of topspin, sidespin, and gyroscopic spin is imparted on the baseball. The moderately efficient downer is in line with the slurve in terms of popularity, with nearly 15% of classified curveballs landing in this bucket. As referenced earlier, this pitch typically comes from higher slots that can naturally apply spin-based movement north and south. The pitch is generally hypothesized to come with the benefit of being platoon neutral. This is due to the fact its trajectory typically doesn't go into an opposite handed hitter's bat path at the same rate as a more lateral breaker. At release, the pitcher is primarily inducing topspin to the offering, resulting in the index finger being on the front side of the ball at release. Finally, to our efficient curveballs, starting with the efficient slurve. Due to the rate of lateral break, efficient slurves are rather rare making up just 6% of classified curveballs across the past two years. Rich Hill and Charlie Morton alone have combined for 30% of all efficient slurves over the past two years. The pitch is the highest stuff plus of any curveball, showing the impact truly elite sweep can have on whiffs and lowering run values. At release, the pitch consists almost entirely of useful spin, with at least 60% of that coming from side spin. Among our high efficiency bucket, Efficient curves are the most popular, making up 10% of all classified curveballs. The pitch could potentially be simply renamed to the Wainwright, as he's thrown over 1,000 breaking balls that have landed in this bucket over the past two seasons. The pitch has the lowest average velocity of any breaking ball, though the exceptional movement on the offering makes up for it. At release, the pitcher contributes equal parts topspin and sidespin to the baseball, with almost no gyroscopic spin appearing. Our final curveball variant is the efficient downer. Arguably the most aesthetically pleasing of the group, the efficient downer is among the most scarce, with just 5% of curveballs landing in this bucket. Due to its extremely steep shape, the efficient downer typically has rather high take rates, especially when thrown in hitters counts. Once again, this is the classic 12-6 curveball, or what some would like to consider the old Uncle Charlie, due to its rainbow-like trajectory to the plate. Dylan sees Tyler Glasnow and Alex Reyes are examples of pitchers who feature this in their arsenal. At release, the pitcher will very literally appear to be throwing the back of the hand at the catcher. Typically, at least two-thirds of a pitcher's spin rate will be contributed towards topspin. Much like the slider, curveball shapes vary across the league. We can see that the gyro curveball and inefficient slurve are pinned close to slider territory. Outside of those two pitch types, the remainder of our classifications appear to distinguish themselves vertically from a league average slider. The biggest takeaway here is that as movement is added to the pitch, the less velocity is required for the pitch to rate out as league average. One of the tools we utilize at driveline baseball to project pitch quality is the blob. 
The ball allows us to plug in pitcher metrics, mainly ball velocity and horizontal and vertical movement, and summarize the quality of the pitch based on just its ball flight characteristics. This is very useful for when you're trying to determine if an 82 mile per hour gyro curveball is superior to a 77 mile an hour efficient slur. The Stuff Plus model was developed by Driveline's Chief Research Officer, Dan O'Coin. Appreciate everyone for following along today. We'll have many videos coming out soon, including a video to work off of this one, which just discusses how to even throw a curveball. If you enjoyed the video today, please like and subscribe, and please feel free to comment below, as this video really just laid out some basic layers to start talking curveball movement and variations. And we'd love to get feedback on what we can do better. Thanks for watching.